of the day. Hi, Zainab. Good to um, not see you, but good to um, see you in the chat again, College Park. I see Tina. Um, this is it. Is this session open to everyone or specifically new graduates? Linda, do you want to take that before we get started? Um, if you have not used uh, Careers for Terps recently, you're more than welcome to stay on board. Um, there are things in there for those folks who graduated a couple of years ago or several years back because there's still you still have the ability to access information that might be of uh, value and of interest to you. So, you know, stick around and see. And if you leave, I won't be offended. But hopefully <laughs> you'll at least get your accounts set up and come back to it if you, if you choose to do so at a later time. Well, thanks. Great. Well, looks like Tina's going to join us. And hi, Chrissy from Silver Spring. Okay, this is fun, but I want to make sure I respect everyone's time. So good afternoon and welcome to Career Week, everyone. My name is Ellie Garrity, and I'm the Director of Alumni Career Programs with the Alumni Association. We're so excited you're able to join us as we kick off Career One on Monday, day one. Today's panel is um, brought to you by the University of Maryland Career Center. It's called Careers for Terps, Your Online Lifeline, hosted by our speaker, Linda Lenore. This webinar will be recorded. So by participating, you acknowledge and consent to your image, likeness, or voice being recorded. Um, and for those of you who plan to use closed captioning, please click on the CC button at the bottom of your Zoom panel. We have a lot of information to cover today, um, and we will be taking questions at the end of this presentation. Feel free to submit all those questions through the chat box that some of you have already been utilizing so far today. So a little bit about Linda. Linda Lenore is an assistant director for the University Career Center at the University of Maryland. She's a member of the center's senior staff and assists in center efforts to engage employers and others in reaching students and alumni through programming, career fairs, and strategic initiatives. She's a Fulbright Scholar and holds an Advanced Graduate Studies Certificate in Educational Psychology, a Master's of Education in Counseling and Guidance, and a Bachelor's of Science in Psychology, all from Howard University. She's very involved on campus committees dealing with diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts, and is a widely respected career development professional in regional and national associations. She's been part of the Career Center team for over 35 years, developing a network of alumni, employers, and professional contacts. And as she often says, before there was LinkedIn, there was Linda. All right, Linda, I will pass it off to you to get things started. Okay, thank you so much. Oops, looks like you uh, you went on mute, Linda. I went on there you mute, go. Sorry. Thank you so much for that introduction, Ellie. And I have to give a shout out. I see two people in here, if not three, that used to work in the University Career Center. So it's good to have you on, on board to, to uh, freshen your memories of the things that you learned when you worked with us here in the University Career Center. I have this, um, this particular presentation titled Careers for Turks, Your Online Lifeline, because I think that a lot of times alumni are not aware of the fact that whereas we can't always sit down and talk with you one on one, there are just so many resources that are available to you. And to access and to be able to um, demonstrate them to you, typically that is done through our careers for Terps. And that's the online lifeline. I am going to share my screen um, and pull up our. I'm going to pull up our um, website so that you can see it and see where we're going to go from here, okay? So this is the, Un the University of Maryland's Career Center's website, as it is right now. And I say that because, as always, we're always improving, and hopefully um, sometime next month it'll look a little bit different. However, the resources will be the same, just um, in a glitzier fashion. Regardless, what you're looking for on our website, which is careers.umd.edu, you're looking for careers for Terps, all right? That is where all of what I'm gonna talk about takes place, okay? So here you would sign in uh, as an alum. If you are a recent graduate, you're gonna sign in most likely as a student because you're gonna to have to change 
your profile. My profile is set up so I can demonstrate as a student. So let me just show you what happens here. Okay. All right, I'm not too sure what happened there. For some reason, let me. I backed out again just to see if I can't make this show up. It's not showing up. The good thing about technology, I hope you all can hear me, is that it is not always reliable, obviously. Oh, God. Yes, Linda, we can hear you and see your shared screen. Yeah. I think the, um, Don't... what you sh what you brought up for the page just looked like it wasn't, um, yeah, it, it was, was a blank shared. page. Yeah, it shared and then it disappeared. Do so you want to go back to the um, home page and, and try that one again? That's what I'm, I'm trying to get to right now. Absolutely. That's going to be the best way for me to do that. I am sharing. Linda, if you want to just in that browser, open up a new tab and, and just go to the, you know, regular mm -hmm. website, I think that might be easiest. Right now we're seeing the screen that um, has Zoom on it. You see in Zoom. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So if you want to just open a new tab there, I think um, we'll all be able to see from there. Okay, I opened up the other tab. Let's try so, this again. There you go. Are we in again? Yeah, just okay. make that full screen so everyone can see that full screen and then you should be good. Can I assume that people can see this now? Um, I wanna be able to go back to a couple of tabs here later on. So um, hopefully you can see most of this right now. Um, what I was going to was going in as a student and even those of you who are alum, you would have this information for your access where you would put in your credentials. And the University of Maryland does use the DUO in order for verification. Um, so you should be familiar with that. That's what I'm looking at right now. So DUO is asking if that's me opening this up. I said, yes, so now I'm logged in. All right, okay. So let me get this a little bit smaller so it's not all in the way. Okay, so this is your home page for Careers for Terps. And the main piece that you're going to start with is to go down and check your profile. And this is the part where I was talking about you need to make sure that the personal information that's in there is accurate, um, especially for some of you new alum who might have changed your major at some point. Uh, make sure that what you put in here is what you think it is, both personally as well as your academic credentials you know, as far as when you're planning to graduate. And I'm trying to see if I can make this go a little bit smaller. I don't think I can. Put it up here. So as you can see here, you're gonna put in the information as to what you're, when you're graduating, um, what your year is in school, your major or majors. Sometimes you might've had more than one. Um, many of you have more than one. And then other information is listed on here. The GPA is listed. However, I can tell you that we do not screen on GPA and we do not allow our employers to screen on it, but might be something you'd wanna put in um, just for your own um, edification. Your interest here is to say, what is it you're looking for? I'm going to go straight with entry level uh, positions. And you can see that there are other areas that you could search for. But as an alum, you're typically looking at this information right here. And this is the entry level piece. I'm gonna talk with you later about, um, about Terrapins Connect. You're gonna put in 
the functions that you're interested in and you can choose more than one. So I chose several. And this ends up being information that will be used to screen the different jobs that are there. Um, what am I looking for? I'm, I'm looking for an established or a nonprofit. I'm actually going to take that out because there's so many up and coming employers that I don't care if they've been in business for just a year. They don't have to have been around 10 years. I want to change that. I also want to go with uh, the diversity piece to see if there are different jobs that, that have special um, outreaches in their DEI efforts, their diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. So I want to see if that's something that's there. Another language, you can always choose that. And of course, you get down to the bottom. What are some of the interests that you might have? And you can add them in as you wish. As I said, the more you put in, the more it's going to help to take the jobs as they come in and they'll look for keywords to help screen that information. Once you've done this, you're going to save it. And the cool thing about this is later on, you might say, you know, I, let me go back and see what am I filtering on? Oh, the reason I'm getting these kinds of jobs is because I have in there film studies and, you know, I didn't mean to put that in. So then you can go back in and edit it at any time. So you definitely want to make sure that your personal profile is up to date. You want to know about the privacy issues that are a part of how we screen things and the emails and notifications that are available. This, you want, I would recommend that you start by taking most information, okay? And then you can weed out what you don't want later on. So you would like for us to send emails when there are some jobs that may be of special interest to you. Those will be sent to your email. Okay, if you want the employer to see your profile and reach out to you, I know a lot of the employers do that now on LinkedIn. You can do that here too. I'm not going to do that right now because I don't want them contacting me here at the university. <laughs> um, I want to know about the upcoming events. You know, what's, what's going on on campus that I might want to participate in, especially since so many of our resources that we do our webinars now and therefore virtual. It might still be of interest to you. There might be a, um, a particular panel that's dealing with a, a specific industry and might have some uh, experts in there that you might want to hear what they have to say. Here you can get more information as far as newsletters. So if you want to sign up to get our e-newsletter, it comes out every two weeks just to keep you refreshed as to what we're doing here in the Career Center. You are able to upload a resume or more into the profile. And there's more information that you can do here um, to, to update what you're looking for. There are surveys sometimes. If you'd like to participate to help us out, you can check on that too. As always, you have to continuously save, okay? So the one thing I added was that email. So I'm gonna make sure I get the emails in that are um, being sent out to uh, the various students and alumni. So once you have your profile in place, the other information at this time is all right here. One of the big questions I always get, first of all, has to do with counseling appointments. Let me explain that under counseling appointments, you can sign up to see a counselor if you are a recent graduate, recent being you are within the first year of graduating from the university. So at this time, for those of you who graduated through last December of 2020, you would be still considered a recent grad, meaning that you can see the, um, the, the um, um, staff members who are affiliated with that particular college. Um, you would go in and just choose it as if you were still here on campus. For those of you who have been out for a longer period of time, you would need to go accordingly. You can make a 30 minute appointment. I can do one appointment just to kind of show you some resources to get you started, but I do have minimum appointments. I do want to make sure you understand that. The other is, and I think when I refreshed, I got rid of that particular one. The other one is that for the School of Business, if you're from the Smith School, or if you're from the A. James Clark School of Engineering, both of those places have their own career centers and they exclusively see their alumni. Um, at this time, they don't have any limits. So if you've graduated with business, even though you might now be doing uh, something totally different, you might be teaching now, 
you are still a product of the School of Business. So you would reach out to the School of Business's career services and uh, contact them for their services to alumni. I will tell you in general, a lot of services on campus have had to um, reimagine themselves due to Zoom webinars and everything else associated with uh, doing virtual work during COVID. And the same thing happens in terms of our staffing, which might be a little bit less than what we've always had. Engineering is the same thing. You reach straight out to um, the folks in engineering. Uh, public policy also has its own career center and can provide you with assistance. So if you've graduated from those areas, that's where you'd reach out to. The same thing is now happening over in, for those of you who graduated out of Vsauce, the Behavioral Social Sciences. They now have a new center specifically for uh, Vsauce students and students and alumni. Once again, you'd go to their page to find out um, how you can connect with them and who it is that you'd speak to, to just get you directed, to get you, get you started, all right? So if you are not of those schools, then you would use the Careers for Terps to set up a counseling appointment, all right? The other thing that happens is we have had on-campus interviews. And so for those of you within your first year, you can still do on-campus interviews as we have them. Events and career fairs, all of that is right in here. And you can see some of that like right across the top. Um, we have today, there's something going on, you know, throughout the week. Um, and if you just look, you'll see tons of events coming up uh, for folks who are both on and off campus. Specifically for those of you who might be looking at a teaching position, um, Obviously, the, the national news lets you know there are a lot of teaching positions. Well, we do have a career fair that is specifically for that. We also have coming up a, our, our um, three-day career fair, I'm trying to get to that, which is at the end of February. And a lot of times that's most easily found. Let me see. Within our website under events, and you will see that in February, if we just go with fairs, you will see that in February, there's a teaching event and a few other ones coming up. We went to March, sorry about that. But most importantly, yes, we are doing our spring career fair. We have two days of the Spring Career Fair, and that is open to alumni of all ages. You will be able to tell whether they're looking for entry-level um, students who are currently enrolled, or if they're looking for seasoned alumni. But that's going, there will be two days where that's in person, and the third day is actually going to take place online. Okay, so there are three days with the third day being online, and this will give you that information. If you're a computer science, you'll find out more information here about how they're handling their, ref, their um, information. And for those of you who might be in architecture, um, as a part of that whole series that week, there is an architecture planning, preservation, real estate development fair. And this is all me sourcing by fairs. So that information is going to be readily available to you. And you can just source it down right here on the Careers for Ter Terps homepage. Um, under events and get more information. By entering it through Careers for Terps, the beauty of that is you can go immediately into registration. So that's going to be helpful to you uh, without having to come back out and move in again. Within Careers for Terps, you are able to store resumes. You can have more than one resume. You might have um, some letters that are, are showing up uh, documents that you've written before. Uh, cover letters that you've created, and that way you can go back in and just update those letters or those uh, those um, resumes accordingly. So you can store, I think it's about seven or eight um, total in that. But the most important piece has to do with our jobs and internships. And this is what I want you all to see mostly right now. We have at this time, let's see if it'll show me the number.
Right now, there are over 2,000 jobs listed in Careers for Terps. Those 2,000 jobs are where employers has, have specifically decided that they want to promote slash advertise these positions to University of Maryland students and alumni. That's what makes it unique. These are people who say, I know about the caliber of education that, that your students and alumni have received. They are the ones I want to talk to. So they have put these positions in here. You can filter in any way that you would like. I like the idea sometimes of just saying, well, who's recently advertising and what are they advertising for? You will notice that because of, of the descriptors that I've placed into my profile, it's going to tell me right away that I cannot apply for the engineering jobs. But you also see that there are other positions that I would qualify for. What I love to tell alumni is look a lot of times, even though you may not qualified to be an intern, you might be able to go to this company and see, well, if they used to hire interns, wonder what kinds of full-time positions do they have? And this is a way for you to get more information about them. When you look on here, you can also see that they are planning to attend an upcoming fair. So you might want to interface with them um, at the career fair that's coming up. But as I said, if they're looking for an intern, there's nothing wrong with saying, well, let me find out what else they might be um, looking for, okay? You will notice, I just saw this, you will notice that many organizations now are putting information in here about COVID and what their policy is on, in terms of wearing a mask or being vaccinated, et cetera. So, you know, I think that's pretty cool that they are at least letting you know up front what it is and why it is. So um, that ends up being a, a deal maker or a deal breaker for you, at least you were told ahead of time. Going back to these 2000 job openings, keywords are important. You might say, well, let me just go with, I want to stay here in the DC area, just DC, okay? The more filters, the less you're gonna get. If I go with what jobs are in the DC area, you can see that there, that 2000 is now down to 235. If I throw in there that I'm looking for a position, let me see. Position type, I'm sorry, right here, that I'm looking for an entry level position, I'll click here in, in DC to see you know, how many do we have. Now we're down to 123 entry level positions here in Washington. And once again, I prefer that you don't do too in-depth of a search because you may never have looked at the National Women's Law Center for a position if you put in um, too much of a search. In other words, if I put in here communication and go search, that 120 is down to 42, all right? So every time you put in a different variable, it's going to make, make it hone in a little closer, which is good, um, but you want to be able to expand who it is that you're reaching out to, all right? And as you're reading these, I'm looking at here's MBI, National Democratic Institute. As you're reading them, you might, um, and, and it should be something you do almost every day because we are getting jobs in literally every day. So if you go here and you start to, to look at what it is that they're offering, first of all, you've never heard of NDI. And now you know a little bit about them, you know a little bit about what this person will do, okay? the parameters of work, education. And I can tell you for NDI that they accept uh, somebody with a bachelor's is pretty, pretty phenomenal because a lot of their stuff is very much international. Um, the people that you would be working with. And so the experience is in here, a lot about what they're looking for in the position. So you might look at all this and say, you know, this looks like the kind of company that I would really like to work with. And you may, might even look here and see, as you're looking at all this information, 
there might be words in here that are really kind of honing into what it is that you love to do. And so you take something like this, and if you put it into this website called Tag Crowd, it's going to help you under visualize to see what are some of the key words that you should make sure are in your cover letter and your resume that show your ability to communicate your media skills, your understanding, and et cetera. And I didn't do all of it. I just wanted to um, show you how you can capture this information very easily through Tag Crowd. And that becomes one of the tools that we use quite often as we're working with students and alumni, how to be definitive or focused in what it is that you're looking to do. Because many of us, come out of school after graduating and you're not too sure. And those of you who graduate over a year ago, I'm sure many of you are thinking, yeah, that's right. You know, I changed my job two or three times because I wasn't sure. I got stuck somewhere I wasn't sure I wanted to be, okay? But this will help you to understand who is the organization and this will describe that organization. And you might decide to follow them so that you can see when they end up having more opportunities. Um, they also have, and I should have left it on there. When you go to follow and the organization, you can see within that organization that they are actually listing the jobs that they currently have and give you a sense of who NDI is, okay? I hope all that's making some kind of sense to you. Um, the other piece of this is if you decide that you really like what NDI has to offer and you're following them, you might say, okay, I'm going to keep this in front of me. And so I'm going to be sure that I favor it. I think I just did. And how you want to apply, you can apply for the job. You can put a star next to it so that you can come back to it. And so Within the context of what you see here in the C4T database um, management of the homepage, you can be in charge of your job search. And as I said, some of these jobs, I mean, how many of you have ever heard of NDI? Probably two. I happen to know about it because one of my daughters worked with them one time. And from her working there, I captured them and told them they need to start advertising positions. So I was very really glad to see that they have that in there. Okay. So you're the one who takes control of how you want the search to go. Okay. You, you're the one who takes control on how you want to list your favorites, the ones with the stars. Okay. You're the one who can manage the applications that you've submitted using the Career for, for Terps database in order to get those out there. You're also the one who might say, you know what? I'd like to get some job alerts, okay? So in other words, I want to know when they get any new jobs that are in DC, send them to me weekly. Cause right now there are 49 new DC jobs and there are 50 that are for entry level. So I can make this selection and receive these alerts. I've done that already. And so every other day, just about, I might get, a couple of job listings from C4T saying, here's some jobs that I might be interested in, okay? And that way you don't have to keep going back into the database in order to make that decision. So searching for jobs and taking advantage of this is so important, as I said, because these are employers who have said, I am looking for University of Maryland students and alumni, okay? I hope that makes sense to you. I will get to the questions in a little bit, but let me also show you that within this whole uh, bit of information on the left here, if you go down here to resources, you will see in particular, there's some resources that might be able to assist you in your decision-making. Um, throughout the last year, we did a lot of programming um, that was virtual, obviously, and people took notes of the individuals, alumni and employers. And so what you'll see in here is the information on various industries 
that you might want to follow up and listen to. Okay, these are some, of, this is from our past programming over the last couple of years, really, because there are 169 in there. All right. So that's the one on the, the notes. Check out the notes. A lot of alumni and employers are the ones that we are showcasing. Career Finder and Career Explorer are, for, are basically through the Department of um, Labor. And those are two tools that you can use that are available to anybody to find out a little bit more about yourself. Um, most of us, when somebody says, tell me about yourself, it's like, you know, it's like, Jesus, there's so much I could use to describe who I am and what I want to do. Career Finder will help you to hone in on what you want to say. Career Explorer will help you to then identify particular um, opportunities or industries that might be of, of uh, interest to you. You'll also see we subscribe to several services that are good. One is Focus 2. Focus 2 is also one where you uh, basically you would set up your, your own um, password because this is not available to the general public. It is only available to you as an alum if you have signed into your Careers for Terps account and then established a Focus 2 account. Focus 2 is one that helps to look at your interests, your skills, your abilities, your values. When was the last time you thought about your values? What's important to you in a job, okay? Um, or your interests, and were any of those developed over the past year, two years of COVID? Um, things have changed a lot. So Focus 2 has those uh, critical elements that are involved in understanding who you are and what you bring to the table, and also what it is that you might like to use as you move into your next um, career, okay? Um, interview Stream. Interview Stream is actually... Um, it's where there are about 1,400 questions that you might be asked if you're trying to get a job, if you're trying to get into dental school, regular uh, graduate school, the questions are in there. And it's a virtual one in that there's a person I call Miss, Miss Personality that comes up. Uh, the question is asked. And as you respond, um, it's being recorded. Now, in this day and time, a lot of you guys probably are using your cell phones to do that. Well, this is similar to using your cell phone, okay? Except that it's not on your cell phone. And the other is what, what happens when you're doing this is that you play it back, you see yourself, and you can get a sense of, do you look up a lot? I know I do. Um, do you look up? Are you playing with your hair? Are you fidgeting with your eyes? Are you like this? Are you like this? You know, so you can look and make a judgment. Ooh, look how I presented myself. I need to answer that question again. And maybe I'm using my hands too much. I got to hold my hands away so I don't do that. I also want to check out my background. What does my background look like? Oh my goodness, because backgrounds are important. You don't want to have a background of um, a beach resort <laughs> when you are applying for a job, for instance, okay? Uh, just kind of shows that your mind might be somewhere else. So I would hold off on that. But you want to have a tasteful background um, that you can, um, a slight pattern, but not a lot of pattern, or use the blur on it if you're in your house and use the blur tool that makes it so that these people are not distracted by that. But the good thing about interview stream is that once you've done that, you go back and you listen to yourself and they've got a couple of buttons, mm, like, and duh, find out how often do you say, uh, or like, like, like this, and like that, um, or duh, or hmm. And you can kind of say, so, oh, I need to watch myself. This is not sounding too good, okay? So that is available for you to practice. You can then send that to other people. And this is, once again, this is password protected. You can send it to a friend, you can send it to a parent, um, basically just so that you can get some feedback on, I'm trying to prepare for this interview and here are four questions that I've chosen to respond to. I think I finally nailed it. Well, how do these sound to you, okay? Now, firsthand, some of you, especially my former Career Center students, 
uh, knew of this as the Vault. Well, Vault is now called First Hand. They've kind of partnered with um, another organization. The Vault guides, once again, how it's all uh, password protected. In other words, if you go to Google and you put in Vault, yeah, you'll get Vault, but then you're going to get to where you want information, and it's not going to let you get any information because you uh, don't have the subscription. So once again, this is available for students and alumni, and alumni who are recent alum and those who are other alumni. So you can go in and get that information. They are especially known for their industry guides that will tell you about a particular industry and what to expect. And those are guides that you can download uh, for your own information. The other is for those of you who are still, I think I usually get a few students. If you are a student, LinkedIn Learning is available for free to those of you who are currently enrolled. And if you haven't taken advantage of that, you might want to do so. They have, a, they have hundreds of courses that they have that are online short term, you know, whether it's refreshing your memory of how to do Excel or um, a course on diversity. Tons of terrific information uh, available for free. For those of you who have graduated, I do believe they make it available, but of course it's going to be at a price. So keep that in mind. And the last one I wanted to show you is going global. Once again, login protected. But what Going Global does, especially for those of you who might be internationals, is to help you to find out jobs that are located in different places throughout the world, all right? And I can tell you the person who started this company is a phenomenal person um, to the point where she now does a live webinar that you can sign up for in here. Um, and she does these several times a month. Marianne is um, just on top of everything and does a wonderful, wonderful um, presentation on job searching during and getting through COVID. And she does it live and she does answer your questions right there too. So by clicking there, you'll be able to see the dates that, you, that she's offering and how to um, set up for it. The other is for those of you who have an H-1B visa, this is how you can search to see who are some of the companies that I might want to look into, all right? Um, when you're searching for your jobs here, you can look at it, there it is. If you want to stay here in the city, in the uh, United States, and you wanna work in Atlanta, okay? Although I think they just had snow the other day, so maybe you don't want to work in Atlanta. <laughs> but once you put in Atlanta, you can find out are there companies in Atlanta that are familiar with and will promote um, H1B. And oh, I didn't put it in. And you can then select what it is that you're looking for as far as a keyword: engineering. Uh, consulting, business, et cetera. So you'd, you'd fill this information out for that. There is a nice video, that's what I love about the way they do this, where they will provide you with um, online video information so that you can be more success, successful in using this information. They also have, this is for the, the global part. The other is, you know, sometimes you think about, well, I'd like to go and live in another country. The country guides are also very nicely done. You ever want to live in Australia? And they'll give you good information on country, finding a job on, in, in Australia, what are some of the opportunities, et cetera. So this can help to open up the world to you as to what you do with your degree once you graduate from the University of Maryland. Okay, so those are some of the main features. Um, I just want to go do a quick review because I know several people came in late, and then I want to look at the questions. So the main thing for everybody is to know, once you get into Careers for Terps, which you do through our homepage, careers.umd.edu, you set up an account, 
you would set up as an alum. If, it's, if you're new, if you're a student, you're going to go back in there and make sure that you have redefined yourself. Do let me say this one thing, though. For those of you who may be international students, if you get to, if you become a citizen, you need to change that first with the registrar's office. And then when they have confirmed it, then you can tell us and we can change it within our system. Okay. So once again, so here's where you are at home. You're going to go down and verify your profile and the selections that you've made. If you are within the first year and you want to make a counseling appointment, you can do that here online, except if you are engineering, business, or um, School of Public Administration, public policy. Those three, you go to their websites, they each have their own career centers, as well as the Feller Center, which is a part of Vsauce. You would go on here to find out more about upcoming events like these. As you can see, they're already here. All right. If you start doing your resumes and you have two, maybe one geared towards communication and the other one that's dealing more specifically with social media, you might have two very concrete resumes and you want to hold on to them. This is a place for you to store it. You can go back and tweak it. You can store a couple of cover letters, tweak them later. So it's a good place to come back to. And as I said, most importantly is to know that you can use and search our database, which we are getting jobs in every day to see what kind of jobs are out there that are being um, made available to students and alumni. And that's over here. And then once again, you can source them by location, keywords, position type, and other filters. Okay. The other filters also can, I think that, that's where you can put in um, your, your um, visa authorization information. But putting it in here helps you to make sure that you are um, not wasting your time or the employer's time if they're not in a, in a position to recruit you, okay? And um, once again, on those upcoming events, to keep in mind in February, we are doing specifically two full days of in-person um, career fair and one day of virtual. And prior to that, there are a number of, of other meetups that we will be hosting. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to just jump over and see what kinds of um, questions might have come about. Keeps wants me to leave, leave the meeting. I'm not trying to leave the meeting. Let me I got it, Linda. Down. I can read some of these to you if it's helpful. Um, oh, that would be helpful. Thank you. Yeah. So let's see. Does going global or careers for Terps offer options to filter by remote jobs? That was one um, by Nikita. Hi, Nikita. <laughs> <laughs> Nikita used to work with me. Hi, Hi Linda. Linda. <laughs> so I remember Nikita and Nikita, um, I can't get to right now, but where I saw the internet, right at the beginning where it says that I was searching on um, uh, whether it was full-time, part-time, that is where the information is for remote. Yes, you can search for remote. And you can do that on both going global as well as on uh, the careers for terms. Absolutely. Okay. And you said that was located in... Um... What search bar? Yeah, let me see if I can pull it back up. It's um, let me see if I can get to it quickly. Oh, it's gonna make me go through all the whole login again. Uh, when you first get in, and Oh, I think maybe Linda froze. 
Someone just shoot in the chat if it looks like she's frozen to you as well. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Jason. <laughs> you never know if it's um, you or if it's them. Looks like she's frozen. So we'll give her a second to, to come back to life. I think she was trying to um, find that for you, Nikita. Let me go through the questions to see if there's anything else um, that I can answer for you. Um, let me see. Looks like someone answered. Oh, you all answered that question for yourselves. For alumni, do you need to use a UMD email or can you use your personal? Absolutely, alumni can use your personal email addresses. It looks like you all figured that one out. Um, what else? What about Nikita's question? Is there a specific way to connect with alumni in Florida? I'm gonna let Linda do that one. Can engineers use careers for TERPs for job search or only careers for engineers? Can you review how to um, see the tag crowd? Okay. So these are all wonderful questions that sadly as the presenter, I don't have the answer to. Um, I'm gonna give Linda just another minute to see if she can sign back in. Um, otherwise I will take note of these questions and make sure that she can reach back out to you. So let me just give her another minute. Um, we all know what it's like to have those, those Zoom technical difficulties. So. We'll see if she can come back to us. Otherwise, um, I'll definitely get you all the answers to your questions. Thanks for your patience. Um, I had a quick question. Did you see the last question that was just posted about the salary? I did. Thanks, Jasmine. I did see that question. And um, I, again, sadly don't have the answer to that one. Um, so I, I'll have to um, check in with Linda to see, um, see if she knows the answer. I'm sorry, I just am not super familiar with the platform. So she, um, she'll definitely know. So um, at this point, I don't see that Linda's joining us and I know we're getting close on time now. So I wanna respect all um, of your time. So um, what I will do is download this list of questions, send them to Linda. And, and when I send you all the video recording of this, um, I'll make sure that I have her answer those questions. So, so you all, you know, can get your um, questions answered, but I appreciate all of your flexibility. I appreciate you tuning in and sticking it out to the end. I, I really hope you, you all got something out of this and can definitely use this as a resource during your job search or things like that. So um, again, I will, you'll definitely hear from me over email and um, we will get you the answers to the great questions that you are asking. But otherwise, I, I hope to see you all at another program during career week. And thanks so much for joining us today. I'll see you again soon. Thanks.